Well, hi guys, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And there's been some real progress over the past couple of weeks. It's especially on the electrical system. I really want to show you what I've done there, but something really, really exciting has arrived. That's right, that is our leisure battery. Very, very exciting. So hopefully in today's video, we can get this put there and everything powered up and yeah, tested. See if everything works. Really, really exciting. There is a bit of a caveat though. I am waiting for one piece of cable. So hopefully that arrives today, but what I need to do first is fit a, uh, a bracket to stop the battery from moving and also I just want to show you guys what I've done to all the electrical stuff because in my mind it looks pretty damn good. So let's check that out. Right, well there's no denying there's been a hell of a lot of work gone into all this. In the previous video you saw how I placed everything out on the board just to work out where I wanted everything and I did go with that actually. That is exactly how everything is all laid out. I haven't moved anything amazingly in fact probably the only thing i did move was the shunt was originally facing that way but i needed access to the the uh, ports on the side there for it talks to the serbo gx and things like that so i needed access to that but i've mounted everything down i pulled all the cables through and i basically just worked my way around using the schematic from roma and and just worked my way around connecting everything up I'm really impressed with actually how neat it all looks. I've also added some trunking, so there's some black trunking that runs around, and that is mainly for the data cables that that feed the Serbo GX. So there's um, little they're V direct cables, so they're just they're just basically a bit like USBs that kind of thing. But they just they feed the data from from a couple of the different devices. I am waiting for a cable that will join. The Serbo GX to the big inverter and that will route around in the trunking all the way around there this trunking just came from Amazon and you get a big pack of it with a load of like corner pieces and things so it's, it's really good actually it's only about 20 pound and you get tons of the stuff I also connected up the solar so the solar comes in from the roof into the top out the bottom then back behind the board and into the solar charge controller so that's nicely put in Again with the Orion, so that comes from the uh, battery, the vehicle battery, so it charges when we're driving along. That pops in there, and this is a, a non-isolated one. So if you've got a van like ours, which is a metal chassis, you can have a non-isolated one, which basically means you don't need to send a ground cable all the way back to the starter, um, the, the vehicle starter battery. You can just tether that into the ground of the links so that was quite good that just saves running two cables back to the the starter you can see an additional cable in the input so we've got the main one that comes from the the vehicle battery there's also another one now that actually comes from the easy plus when we are plugged into mains hookup uh, we can also not only charge our leisure battery which will be mounted down here but it also trickle charges that cable goes all the way back through and trickle charges the vehicle battery so it just keeps the vehicle topped up as well which is really neat you can see i've got the main switch connected so that one is bolted in that will go onto the uh, leisure battery and this is the cable that i'm waiting for so the the black cable the black 70 mil cable i just ran out of the stuff so i just need to get a bit more um i'm only getting two meters but it's amazing because it's such thick cable it's amazing how expensive that cable is so just a couple of meters of that and that will go down to the leisure battery as well so that is the cable that is holding holding us up it should arrive today hopefully i changed these cables to 70 mil they need to be uprated what that does is um when we're plugged into the mains the the power from the mains runs through to the links and then onto all our 12 volt stuff so we can run the whole van on 12 volt 
via the inverter that's inside there and uh, basically power power everything inside the van which is quite nice another few cables that need connecting this blue one i don't think will be connected i wasn't 100 percent certain when i ran all the cables in i wasn't 100 percent certain how i was going to uh, heat the hot water and things like that so i ran an extra 230 volt cable and and same on the other end it's just not connected to anything so that is just there ready for uh well it's just a backup if if we needed an extra cable you can see a few blue cables this is all 230 volt stuff so the beauty of that is when we're plugged into mains hookup this blue one here um comes from that hookup plug that's on the side of the van into this box and then that can either via the inverter power everything in the in the van or if you want to use 230 volt stuff there's two feeds here one goes to the kitchen and one goes to the the living room at the front essentially uh, so we've got a couple of 230 volt sockets well we will have they're not plugged in yet but we'll have some 230 volt sockets that will will be powered when we're plugged into the the mains also the good thing about the easy plus here is if the mains is disconnected or we don't have mains available the battery um, the leisure battery will feed through here and back through these big 70 mil cables into here and via the inverter again will power um, the 230 volt stuff using the battery so yeah we can still use them and that's up to um, well it's a 1600 VA inverter and basically that just means it's, it's around about 1600 watt inverter so you can't use real big kettles and things like that but most stuff can be used um, the reason it says 1600 VA rather than 1600 watt is just because the wattage just depends on the temperature pretty much but yeah it's around about 1600 watt inverter and that's good for for most things that well everything that we need and most things that most people need really now the other big addition is the 12 volt fuse board so this is a blue c 12 volt fuse board and this is essentially everything that's going to be 12 volt in the van comes back to here and we put some fuses in and we can power the stuff from there now there's there's only one fuse in there which is the spotlights because that's the only thing that we've actually connected up everything else is just chopped cable at the end so i can't connect that up but as and when we connect stuff up we'll be able to pop a fuse in and uh, test it so most of these are lighting uh, that's the feed in and same with the neutral um, and then you've got we've got a much bigger one you can see that earth cable there this this one here is not connected to anything just because it was a three core cable that i used six mil three core cable that is for the fridge uh, just because they have quite a high current draw when they first start up and i just don't need that earth cable so i've just left it for now i'll probably just put a terminal block on that just to just to tie it up really and then also the one underneath is the diesel heater so that's the feed for the diesel heater so that's a four mil cable so yeah I, at least with that as well i can actually wire up the the diesel heater because you saw in a previous video that we have tested that and that is kind of ready to go so that's pretty good the only other thing i need to do is i need to put a couple of cables this is like a, a temperature cable so that also needs to go back to the uh, leisure battery and i also need to put a few other ones into the serbo gx so you can see this white cable here that actually comes from the waste tank so that will allow us to see what level the waste uh, the waste water tank is i need to put another one in for the fresh water tank but i'm actually going to just run that internally via the bed frame in some conduit over to the water tank that is on this side you can see the cable there uh, that's it there so that's the actual fresh water tank sender and that needs connecting into the bottom here and also with that we've got a display for it i'm not sure where the display is going to go just yet but that has a hdmi cable that goes in the top so i'll probably just plug it in when everything's turned on just to see what the screen is like really now when i had my consultation with steve from roma we discussed what size inverter to go for that's one of the big questions really that that you need to answer when before you install all this stuff 
we are quite we actually want to cook on gas we want to use gas for cooking because we actually quite enjoy that um, we wanted to use diesel for the heating and uh, also for the hot water so we didn't feel that we needed a, a huge inverter and big setup now some people love to use induction hobs they require a big drawer of current so they need quite a big inverter and quite a big big setup um, we just wanted to be able to charge laptops maybe an e-bike um, charge our phones that kind of stuff and possibly use an air fryer because air fryers are quite useful when you've got a couple of little kids putting fish fingers in and things like that but it's not an essential we are quite happy to do that when we're plugged into mains only if we want to however there are plenty of air fryers that are below the 1600 watt um, usage power usage that this inverter can provide so we will actually be able to use a small air fryer when we are off grid be able to use hair dryers um, things like that it's just real big um, heating elements that are above the 1600 watts and like I say we are not that fussed about using in, an induction hob alternatively you could actually have a small electric hob if you wanted to that you just plug in when you're on mains hookup that will still allow that to be used because it will just send the mains power through this system and to the sockets bypassing the inverter so it's quite a clever bit of kit really now there's quite a few different Victron Lynx products the Lynx products are, are basically um, bus bars, so big strips of copper that have the live and the ground um, plugged into it and you can send everything back to this as like a, a bus bar setup. And they're quite neat because they're all nicely covered and, and look quite good. And they just keep everything compact and in one place so it's quite good. You can connect more of these together really easily, that kind of thing. Now one thing, this is the Lynx Power In, this is a real basic one, it is just bus bars so you've got the um, black along the bottom and the red along the top so the live and the ground and then everything connects into that. You can connect the main battery, the main isolator directly to it which I've done and you can do the same with the shunt. You do have to pack this out a bit just to get everything level that sits further back that sits further forward but anyway you get it all sorted but the other thing you can do is you can actually modify these as you can see here and fit fuses if you didn't do this you would have to have separate fuses on all these red cables now this is a much neater way of doing it you essentially there's a guide online it's really really straightforward I'll link the video in the description below you just basically put some long M8 bolts in the back and then add some nuts and put the fuses on. It's really good. And that is essentially what the Lynx distributor does, um, but it costs quite, well, it costs a fair bit more money and it's a lot cheaper to do it this way. So yeah, it's just quite a nice, neat setup really. And it just keeps everything um, hidden away. And yeah, behind this, nice blue box so it all matches inside your van now i know some of you will be saying wait a minute you should be using heat shrink on here i've used insulation tape and that's mainly because you just could not get hold of red uh, heat shrink in this area for some reason i couldn't get any and uh, it would i can order some which i will do and i will then uh, take the tape off and i'll put some heat shrink on but the reason i didn't do it i, I just didn't want to hold up the build process really this is fine for now um, and I can easily put some some heat shrink on at a later date but uh, yeah it should really have heat shrink, heat shrink on as you very well know I've also taken the feed for the um, Serbo GX from here uh, because it comes with an inline fuse built in already so that's quite good you can just take it off the the end two pieces which if you were connecting loads of these together you would just um, take out this side here and bolt them all together when i was doing my build one thing i didn't account for was the chassis earth for the inverter so um, i've basically clipped that round it goes off behind there and that is then bolted to the chassis in a different place to where um, the main links uh, power in is bolted to so that there is a main earth chassis that is used for all the 12 volt stuff, but then I've used a separate one for the 230 volt um, chassis mounting, which is what you're supposed to do. 
that Wago box there, that is just because um, I've got a two-way lighting system for the, the spots. You can just see there's a bit of a um, just chucked together. That's one of the switches for the lights. And then there's another one at the front there as well. So there's one there and then one back there. And that is just so that when you open the sliding door, you can press the switch. It'll be on probably on the end of the kitchen. You'll be just be able to press the switch and turn the lights on. But then likewise, when you're in bed, you'll be able to turn them off in bed or on. So I just needed to put a separate box there because it just required more connections than just a standard um, cable out from the battery with a switch into the lights. It just required a bit more cabling. So that's why there's that Wago box there. Right, anyway, enough waffle. It's time to check out the exciting part. This is the heart of the van. This is the main thing. This has powered absolutely everything in here. Right, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to lift this out myself. It is pretty heavy. Oh gosh, wow, what a beast. Right, well there we have it. That is the Roma 320 Smart 3. So this is a 320 amp hour uh, lithium battery. It's lithium iron phosphate battery. So yeah, it's 320 amp hour. So that will last us absolutely ages. It can discharge at up to 250 amps, which is massive. You know, I really don't have anything in the van that will need 250 amps, but yeah, you've got plenty of um, availability there. So you can actually power stuff. If you've got a big enough inverter, which we don't, but you can power stuff at 3,200 watts through an inverter. It is so, so powerful. So those of you who are uh, designing vans with induction hobs or um, water heaters, electric water heaters and all that kind of stuff. If you really want to, if you really want to maximize your off-grid living, these batteries are the ones for you. The battery has a built-in BMS, so it has a, a monitoring system built into it, so that just protects it against uh, any short circuits, that kind of stuff. It also has Bluetooth built in, so with an app, we will actually be able to connect to this and check the, the status of the battery. You can connect up to four of these together if you, I don't know what you're doing, what if you need to do that, but um, yeah, you can connect tons of them together. And I mean, what more is there to say? It's a big black box really with tons and tons of power behind it. But I think what we'll do now is I will get the, the uh, bracket put in. So just to stop this from moving around in the van and we can, yeah, get it, get it mounted. And get it connected up as, as soon as I, I just need that cable to arrive i wish it will arrive now in the instructions for the inverter it actually says don't put the inverter above your batteries <laughs> now obviously i've done that but the the image shows the inverter um above batteries with gases coming off the uh actual batteries there won't be any gases coming off this because it is a lithium battery gases are emitted from lead acid batteries and they can um, damage components metallic components around it so I assume that is why they do not want you to put the inverter above the battery um, so I have actually opted to put it there because it's closer to the wheel well it's a heavy thing this is like 30 kilos so I don't want it right out the back there plus as well it reduces the run for the cable uh, to the actual main switch so I think it'd be fine there um, but yeah let us know in the comments if you think Otherwise, so I did a few bits this morning. I connected some um, an extra data cable. I did some uh, there's like some little auxiliary cables as well that feed from the battery uh, and and things like that. And I waited and waited for that a 70 mil cable. And then I checked the uh, delivery details. And it's not coming till tomorrow. And it feels like every single day I'm I get like a couple of millimeters closer to being able to connect the battery. So I've just I've got impatient and I've just used some of the existing red that I had so this cable uh, I'll need to change that to black when it arrives tomorrow but I had a quite a few lugs left over and 
obviously some red left over. So I thought, oh, stuff it, let's just connect this up for tonight because I really want to, I want to get it connected. So it is in, this cable here just needs tidying up. That is a temperature sensor for the inverter, but everything, everything is connected. I cannot believe it. Ah, it's quite scary because I'm not switched it on yet. So you can join me. In fact, what I need to do first, I just need to put a fuse in, uh, in the cable in the engine bay. So the first thing I'm doing is I've powered up, I put the fuse in that feeds the, uh, from the engine bay to the Orion DC to DC charger and I've turned the engine on. So there is actually a flashing light. So there is some life there. I mean, it doesn't actually say, there's no light on the actual on, on or off bit on the Orion, but I've not put, there's a little green um, clip that I need to put in, but, ooh, but I'm not sure if I can, um, I'm not sure if you're supposed to do a firmware update first, maybe. So I'm just going on to the Victron Connect. Oh, we've got some life in a few places. So I've got a smart shunt that's come on and the um, DC to DC charger has appeared on the app. So let's click on the Orion. Okay, so when, when it first comes up, it asks you to pair it and the default pin is six zeros uh, with all the Victron items. It's now asked me to do a firmware update so I'm just doing that. So yeah, it's just doing a quick update. The current version it said was 1.03, I think, and it's going up to version 1.13, so it's hardly that far behind. So it's been updated. Um, and then if I click on it, uh, it says, yeah, the output is disabled due to remote input inactive. So I think that's that part in there. So let's just put the little green little cabling which just kind of joins two parts together Whoa. oh we've got some life over here now that's now on that's a bit exciting and even the solar charge controller has now come on as well so I can now now that's given some life to a few things it's given life to the servo GX it's given life to the solar charge controller even though the actual solar isolator is switched off so there's no power coming down from the solar panels but this is the um, engine is feeding power into the system so that's pretty exciting so I can click on the solar and do the same with that I'll just do a firmware update on that so that's the solar charge controller updated as well oh we've got some other things on it now the Serbo GX has appeared as well so everything is starting to appear it's really cool I wonder if I can shut turn the solar on let's see what happens with that Ooh. Way. So there we go. Now the solar panels, um, obviously it's daylight, but they are in quite a bit of shade, so I don't think we'll get too much coming in. It didn't go bang, so that's a bonus. Now I should actually mention as well, when I put the battery in, I use these Blue Sea uh, fuses. Really smart bit of kit. So you've got... Um, basically like a mini bus bar that comes off with a big terminal and then the fuse that's a 200 amp fuse that is just just uh, through the actual sort of stud and then the lug goes on top of the fuse it's brilliant it's really compact better than having to put another fuse on the top there but the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the inverter so oh we have life over here as well Everything is coming into life. It's so exciting. We've got flashing lights and green lights. So the solar charge controller is telling me that it's on float at the minute for the battery. I have to look all into what all this means. Once I've got it all connected. So the inverter is on. That's that, I suppose. <laughs> So pretty much everything is on apart from the big red switch, which is pretty terrifying just because it's a big red switch. Right, I'm going to go for it. In fact, before I do that, and before I actually turn the big red switch on, I just want to show you the Roma app as well. 
So it's quite a simple app. It's basically just the details on the actual battery. So we've got 82% um, state of charge on the battery. You can see this says there's 264 amp hour remaining. Voltage is 13.16. Uh, no current being used or anything like that and it's had one cycle 26 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn stuff on and make sure it doesn't go bang let's see what happens let's see what happens do you do it with your eyes shut uh, well that's a bit anticlimactic to be honest not gonna, not gonna lie but has anything changed on the actual battery? No, not yet. Do I need to turn charging on, do you reckon? Oh, do not switch off. Oh, so it's already on. Let's not turn that off. So obviously the, the Roma app is separate to the Victron app. The Victron app is gonna have far more detailed um, stuff on it. But I suppose this, if this is at 82%, with no load on it at all and I've got the engine running and the solar on hopefully that should eventually go go up because I'm not using anything if I'm just charging so we shall see so I've just clicked on the solar charge controller uh, on the Victron app and we're bringing in 11 watts so that's about right with how shaded it is here um, but at least it's doing something, that's the main thing. So it looks to me like I've got a lot of settings to to tweak and alter and get just right. But the fact of the matter is everything is on and it's it's not gone bang. So what a result. Um, but what I really want to try now is I do actually have some lights in. And I'd like to say a huge um, thank you to Atten Lighting who kindly provided us with these fantastic, like real flush fitting uh, LED like puck lights. They only use about three watts. Uh, these are a warm white, hopefully. We'll you'll see if the, <laughs> if the power works. Um, but yeah, we've actually installed three of these um, and then there's gonna be a light on the actual skylight as well. But yeah, Atten Lighting, I don't know if you remember, Many years ago, we put some uh, ch uh, changing color mood lighting in our California Ocean. Atten Light and provided them. So we'll be in touch with them again to discuss some mood lighting that we're gonna put underneath the cupboard sort of over there, uh, maybe in this part of the bedroom as well. They have also sent us some uh, reading lights that will actually go at the back here. So we will have a look at those as well when, when we come to it. But yeah, these are great. But the main thing is we've actually installed them. You can see I've basically put the cables in. I've used some Wago connectors and they are ready to go. We're going to paint the ceiling. This isn't finished yet, obviously. We're going to paint the ceiling. Um, so that's why they're not put in the holes just yet. And plus as well, I need to check that they work. So I have a little light switch here. I'm going to turn that on, uh, they're not facing us, hopefully we should be able to see them. And let's see if this works, uh, yes, yes, that is awesome, we have light, we have light in the van, oh my gosh. I don't think I can quite explain how incredible that is, what a feeling to get some some actual blood running through the veins of this van. Yeah, that is so, so cool. I'm so happy. It's such a milestone. We have power. We have power. I can actually work on it late at night. Yeah, I'm so, so happy. That is all thanks to Roma providing that schematic. There's no way I could have worked all this out without them. So huge thank you to Roma and uh, huge thank you to Atten Lighting as well for providing these lovely warm white lights they look great oh look who's here Hi. hello it's harvey have you had a good day at nursery look at the lights harvey yeah yeah how good is that the where's mommy gone oh she's getting leaner I've, I've connected the battery up battery. and everything's turned on and it didn't go bang 
Look at sure? this. Look. Are you sure? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready for the lights? I'm ready. Let's see. Are you ready? <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing. How good is that? That is incredible. How have you done that? I what? mean what a milestone what an amazing we have light we have light in the van it's a good job i had my sunglasses on exactly <laughs> all the way down there look that is incredible <laughs> that is amazing what an achievement well done sean oh thank you that i'm just amazing. saying i'm saying the help of like the schematic from roma and oh yeah definitely and i also said thank you to atten lighting and i mentioned how do you remember um back in the california when you first got in touch with atten lighting about needing help with the mood lighting yeah all the way around the edge and that now many moons ago yeah and now we're needing help with uh Mummies. What what's he found yeah gosh it, it's crazy how far we've come yeah since back then yeah this is amazing well done thanks right well i've got a lot of settings to play with and work out how everything works what everything does i also uh i need to put the serbo gx screen in as well so We'll, we'll have a look at that in another video because there's loads to, to check. I want to check that it's all calibrated to the correct battery and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, as you can tell, we are so, so happy. It is such a great achievement. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. And please do consider subscribing. It helps out massively if you subscribe. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Hi. Bye. Harvey, say bye. <laughs> say bye. I get Lena to say bye. 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 Say bye bye, Harvey. Bye bye. Good boy.